How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Highway Blossoms. In the last episode, our two main characters found the last piece of the treasure, and again, it doesn't really look like a large bit of treasure. It sort of seems like, you know, gold nuggets, little tiny gold pieces, nothing that could buy mansions and Teslas and this and that, but that's that's what they keep insinuating. But regardless, they found the last bit of the treasure. The treasure hunt is now done, I believe, unless there's some secret finale that they're going to be embarking on. I, that that could be the direction. I I, I hope I'm right. I'm, I'm all down for some more treasure hunting. But also in the last episode, we saw the two main characters finally begin their relationship. Uh, the romantic relationship, to be exact, because the relationship between the two main characters have just been building... I guess, to that point. And that was the point of the of the story so far, is to see how these characters develop and, you know, get together. Or at least I think that's how this uh, is all supposed to go. So let us read on. Let us see what happens between our two main characters. And hopefully nothing bad, because I hate sad endings. Sleeping on it is supposed to help you with tough decisions or with big changes. But that's hard when you can't pass out in the first place. Thoughts of Marina, and of Gramps, and of things changing, and of things staying the same, all brewed together to keep me awake, just like the coffee is right now. When I got up this morning, the first thing I, w I felt was surprise that I'd managed to fall asleep at all. I felt that before. The first, or the three hours I got must have snuck up on me. I drained another cup of coffee, number four, and the last one from this pot. I dump another few scoops of grounds into the coffee maker and start a new batch. I got to see the sunrise, which I, even I usually sleep through. Out here in the middle of nowhere with no light pollution, the sky was vivid, shards of jagged pink tearing into the blue. I nearly dozed off again just watching it. Maybe someday I'll get to watch it with Marina. Someday when I wake up early again, and if she manages to get her lazy ass out of bed. Lazy but cute. Yesterday's events replay in my mind for the upteenth time, and with them come the swirl of emotions that feel like a stomach ache and a high, both at once. Things finally starting to feel normal between us again. Kissing Marina at the Valley of Fire. Her leaning into it. Wondering if I should stop. Her not letting me. Sitting close on the couch, not asking any questions, not answering them either. Wondering if I should. Ugh. It's too early for this shit. The familiar ping of the coffee maker tells me that I've been zoned out for a few minutes now. Smashing my fists into my eyes, I try to rub the sleepiness out. Movement from the back of the RV means I must have woken Marina up. I can hear the sound of her bed creaking and of the covers being thrown back. I feel a strange, nervous elation as she appears in the hallway, looking bedraggled. I've never heard that word before, but I, I guess it's exactly what it looks like. Good morning. She groans like a zombie and stumbles toward me. Want some coffee? A stiff head nod. Smiling, I prepare her a cup. It's only half coffee. The other half is a boatload of sugar and the creamer that neither Gramps nor I ever drank. I don't even know why we had it, but it's not expired. When she reaches me, Marina leans into me. Sort of falls, really, crashing against my shoulder. Hey, careful! A bit of coffee sloshes out of the mug and onto my hand, but I don't mind. She takes the drink and a couple small sips. Mm. Minor bliss replaces her glazed expression. Good? Good. Man, fuck coffee. It ain't right. There's hardly any coffee in it, you know. Just the way I like it. I wonder if she had a hard time falling asleep like I did, but I'm hesitant to ask. Afraid she'd say no. Afraid she'd say yes. So I just sit down and she takes a spot next to me. We both quietly sip our coffee as she rejoins the land of the living. When she finishes her cup, she's alert enough for a conversation. Sleep okay? I figure that's safer than flat out asking. Hmm... Yeah, kinda. Kinda? I like... 
She trails off. Maybe I gave her alertness too much credit. I forgot what I was just saying. I laugh and stand up. Don't worry about it. Marina mumbles something incoherent. What was that? She clears her throat. Sorry, I asked if you slept all right. <laughs> yeah. Took me a while to fall asleep, but after that, yeah. It's not strictly a lie. It's just not entirely the truth. Uh, eyes half closed, Marina smiles thinly. Good. I turn around so that she doesn't see how preoccupied I am, or guess what's on my mind. Whatever it is that I'm dealing with, it's not her problem. I don't want her to worry about me. The floor creaks as Marina stands up too, but I don't face her. So, where are we going today? Hell if I know. No idea. We have a few days before the show. Anything you want to see? Whatever it is, I'll make it a trip, or I'll make the trip. Yeah, we'll, we'll go anywhere in the vicinity, I suppose. But n nowhere on the other side of the country that might uh, screw us over for the, for the main location. We're not very far from Las Vegas, right? Not at all. It's just a couple hours. Let's go there! Finally, I meet her eyes again. A smile on her face is pure and earnest. I can't help but return it. Sure, that sounds like fun. Guys, I live in California, and I've never made a trip over to Las Vegas. Uh, my dad wanted to take me there for my 21st birthday, but money is, uh, it's very hard to come by, you know? And she hugs me. Her warm figure is pressed close against mine. She smells like my shampoo. I wrap my arms around her and hold her close. Just for a second, everything feels all right, like it's all gonna work out. And I realize how badly I want it to. I squeeze tight and then pull away. What was that for? Just felt like it. Ah, young love. Worry creases her face. Should I not? Nah, you definitely should. Go get dressed and I'll get us on the road. You cool with waiting to eat until we get there? Yeah. Cool. There are a million buffets and exotic restaurants there, so we can find something good. I like Las Vegas already. Torque. I gently push her towards the back to go get ready. She sticks her tongue out over her shoulder as she goes. To the road we go. I, I think. Uh, we're looking kind of dead here. Uh, by the way, sorry if I sound like I'm kind of out of breath or making a little bit more mistakes than usual. I, uh, I don't know why I do this, but I record these after I run, and sometimes I'm just really out of breath, and, and today seems like one of those days. So, I'm sorry, but I'm trying my best. I'm holding it together. Dying, but holding it together. Watching, I rub my temple before climbing into the front seat. I'm looking forward to this, and I know Marina is too. So why does it feel like I'm doing something wrong? If we're doing something wrong, I don't know what it is. I thought we were doing everything right. For a long moment, I just pressed my forehead against the steering wheel, not thinking much of anything. The sound of Marina's approaching footsteps make me sit up, and I put on a smile as she hops into her seat. Ready? Yep. Here we go, then. To the road we go, but for reals this time. And we head out towards the highway. Oh, yeehaw. Las Vegas appears on the horizon far before we can actually reach it. Clusters of generic skyscrapers are interspersed with the world-famous casinos which come in many shapes and sizes. Some are indistinguishable from the tall banks and offices around them, except for gouty logos and signs. Others are constructed to look like a pyramid, or a Roman palace, or a medieval castle. There's a distinct clash where some buildings are striking and clean looking, as if they'd just been completed yesterday. But then just beside them will be a sad looking place with faded paint and signs that aren't supposed to be flickering. As we enter the city limits, we're suddenly surrounded by the noise of traffic and the smell of exhaust. Exiting the highway was like crossing the boundary to another world. 
Marina drinks it all in. Oh, what's that one? The super tall one. I remember the first time I went to LA. Uh, and you gotta keep in mind, guys, I'm a country boy. Uh, not the music, but just the, the living environment. Out in the middle of nowhere, I guess you can imagine. So I'm not really used to seeing a very large city. I, I kind of live in a small city now, but I'm not used to the big city. So when I actually got to see all those skyscrapers and, and crazy building shapes and the very strange roads, like like the intersections, they're, they're not normal intersections. They're like, I, I, I can't even describe it. It, it was just a an overall strange experience, but a very unique one, you know? She points through the through the windshield. Uh, even though it's impossible to follow her finger, I know which one she's talking about. That's the stratosphere. I think it's one of the tallest buildings in the country. Whoa. We're still miles out, but she already seems to be infatuated with the city. Her eyes are wide, and so is her mouth. It's even cooler up close. I never knew cities could be this... huge. I keep forgetting that she's never been out of New Mexico. Sure, there are a couple of decently sized cities there, but nothing this impressive. See what I mean? Y yeah. I'm excited for her to experience all of this for the first time. Honestly, Las Vegas is kind of on the small side. At least compared to places like New York or Chicago. Man, I believe it. Seriously? That's insane. I can't imagine that many people in one place. What about your house? She giggles. That's pretty close. She reminds me of a puppy straining against its leash as she whips between looking out the window or the windshield and out the passenger side window. To me, the part of the city that we're in looks like any other downtown area, so I'm not impressed. Once we get to the strip, where all the really famous casinos are located, it'll be different. But first I have another destination in mind. So, Mayor? Yeah? Ever heard of the World Carnival Buffet? At the Rio? I don't think so. Should I? I've heard of, uh, of a, a place called Rio where there is racing. Why do I hear fireworks? Was that in the game or was that outside? I See, I live in I live in the city now. I I know I don't even know anymore. We're coming up on the 4th of July, so <laughs> fuck me, right? Well, if you like food, it's pretty much the greatest place on earth. They have like everything imaginable to eat and lots of stuff that you can't imagine either. Somehow, her eyes get even wider. I want to try it all. Pretty sure you'll change your mind when you see some of it. But that's the spirit. Are we going there now? Hell yeah, we are. I'm starving. Me too. And she grabs my free hand. The one that isn't on the steering wheel. Wow, really? My heart leaps into my throat. Since we're at a red light, I catch her eye, and she smiles, though her face is a little red. Ah, young love. I smile back, but then face forward. Our hands hang limply between our seats. It isn't long before our palms are, are moist with sweat. I don't know whose. Her hand is so soft, like she treats it with lotion or something, but I know that's not the case. Smooth like a baby's. It makes me a little self-conscious of my chewed fingernails and chronically dry skin. Oh shit, I never thought about that with my hands. My hands suck, man. Worried that I'm gonna gross her out and she'll pull away or something. Is this okay? Huh? Maybe I was getting a little too distracted. Is what? She raises our linked hands. This. You just seemed kinda... Like... I mean, I cannot if you... No! No, it's fine. Seriously. Don't overthink things, kids. Relationships gotta be natural. I'm talking louder than I need to, flustered as I try to backpedal. She doesn't look convinced. Okay, sorry, I'm still... You know, not really. It's fine. You're fine, really. 
I'm the one who should be sorry. I'm not usually this weird in a relationship. Now she looks almost offended. Crap. Not like that. I just mean... A blaring honk from behind reminds me that I'm sitting stopped at a green light. The middle of traffic isn't the best place for this conversation. Breathing deeply as we pull ahead, I try to collect my thoughts. Sorry, again. I just... have a lot on my mind. Because I like you. I really do. You know that really freaking well by now. She smiles, though she's still looking down, and our hands are still together. And this is such an awkward time and place to be talking about this. So it's my bad if I'm being weird or whatever. But being with a girl I met on the side of the road is a new one. Even for me, you know? Finally, she laughs. Yeah, I guess it's a little weird. I feel like I can still hear a slight quiver in her voice, but I might be imagining it. So I squeeze her hand tightly, immediately she squeezes back. I only have a vague idea of the direction I need to be driving. Fortunately, it's not too long until the Rio comes into view. What the fucking shit, dude? Okay, yeah, there's definitely fireworks. <laughs> there's fireworks outside. That's for sure. That's, that's great. Uh, it's June 30th at the time I'm recording this, but... Yeah, cool. We're, we're close to 4th of July. Thank, thanks, city people. Thank you. D do appreciate that. I thought, I thought someone was knocking on my door. I got a door that leads outside from my room. I thought someone was knocking on it. It was really weird. Uh, okay, so yeah. Uh, uh, fortunately, it's not too long until the Rio comes into view. Looming large a few miles away. That really got me out of the, out of the immersion here. I'm sorry. We pull into the parking lot near the back where the only open spaces are left. I'm sure you guys heard that because I just peeked over to Audacity um, when I turned back and I saw the... I saw I saw some movement in the wavelengths, so I think you guys heard that. You guys know I'm not lying. It's pleasantly warm outside. I've heard stories of people's shoes melting on the asphalt during the summer, but for now, the weather's perfect. As we cross through the parking lot towards the casino... Marina takes my hand yet again. I can feel my heart rate accelerate, but I squeeze her fingers all the same. Ooh, a casino! The first few steps inside are sensory overload. A million different sounds and a billion different lights all pour from the sea of slot machines. Even at lunchtime on a Thursday, the majority are occupied. We both take a second, frozen in place, to try and process it all. This isn't even my first time in a casino, but I'm overwhelmed just like Marina is. I can see the reflections of a game in her eyes, like a cartoon character thinking of money. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. Is this one of the most popular casinos? <laughs> not even close. Like, it's big, but it's not the biggest. Whoa. I tug her forward. Come on, we'll have tons of time to gawk with food in our stomachs. Holy fucking shit, dude. Wowzers. You guys must have heard that, right? It's like someone's banging on my window. It's so weird. Man, this was... I, I didn't think people would be doing fireworks at this time. But I guess I guess I need to record in advance before the uh, before the Fourth of July because then at that point I'm fucked. The mention of food steadies her steps, or maybe I should just do it anyways, and it will add uh, flavor to the episode. Who knows? Whatever I record at the time. Giant overhead signs direct the way to the buffet. They must be visible from any part of the building. If this place is famous for something besides food, I don't know what it is. We can smell it before we can see it, even despite the stench of cigarettes and B.O. that are pretty strong here. Ah, good old B.O. If you guys don't know what B.O. means, it's body odor. Uh, I went to Anime Expo last year, and there was a lot of that. Not cigarettes, just straight up B.O. People don't know what a shower is. It doesn't smell like any one particular food item, but rather lots and lots of them. Guided by our stomachs, we half run towards the buffet. The line to get in is small, since we got here so early. Marina hops up and down, trying to peek over the head of the bald guy in front of us. 
Can you see anything? Barely. It looks like it goes on forever. Good. I practically throw my card at the attendant. It reminds me of paying to enter an amusement park, and I'm just as excited. We're, we're let through a small gate and into heaven. Rows upon rows of stations form a small maze in the massive room. Deep bins of or deep bins full of food, fried or grilled or baked or roasted, fill nearly every inch of space in each station. Marina and I grab plates from the tall stacks nearby. Meet you in the dining room? She nods, already distracted, and heads straight for the desserts. I load my plate with a slice of prime rib, two rolls, and a scoop of mashed potatoes. I'm definitely up for that prime rib. I pour gravy over them, but I'm not, I'm not down for those uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. I don't care too much for mashed potatoes, and I hate gravy. So, uh, you know, bad choices on that one. For good measure, I also throw a pair of chicken wings from a nearby basket. Hell yeah, dude. They're so fresh that I can see the steam coming off of them. I'm going to need a second plate. I grab one off another pile and toss a small piece of salmon, some pot stickers from the Asian section, and a large spoonful of some sort of casserole. I can't even guess what it is, but it looks good. Everything looks good. Solely because I can't fit more food on my plates, I head to the dining area and pick a seat where Marina will be able to find me easily. Sure enough, she emerges just a minute later, carrying two plates like I did. Wow. You weren't kidding about trying everything. Instead of big portions of a few things like I got, Marina has one or two bites of a couple dozen dishes. Roughly half of them are cakes or other sweets. When in Rome, you know? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I slice off a bite of steak and close my eyes in ecstasy while I chew. It's divine, holy cow. Barely balancing her plates as she slides into the seat beside me, Marina bumps against my shoulder as she gets hit situated, excuse me. And I almost send a fork full of potatoes in her lap. Oops, my bad. In retaliation, I spare a bite of chicken from her plate, swimming in some Asian sauce. No fear! It's double fair. That doesn't even make sense. After that, she finally gets to take her first bite, and she melts. Just like me, her eyes roll back into her head while she chews. I don't even remember what this is, but it's amazing. She scoops up another fork full of what looks like some kind of barbecue br uh, brisket, okay, and, and holds it toward me. Try it! I open my mouth and she guides the fork in. I pull back to chew. It's got a nice smoky flavor. That is good. Right? I almost want to go get a whole plate of just that. Then she tries the baked chicken that she has next to it. Wait, never mind. This is even better. There's a distinct lack of vegetables on both of her plates, but she seems to enjoy everything that she got. Every bite results in some statement about how it's the best thing so far. Did you get any of this? I gesture towards the slice of steak that I've almost finished. Uh-uh. Okay, open up. She dutifully opens her mouth while I cut a bite for her. It's the best part, right near the edge where all the flavor is. It's a little awkward to be feeding her like this, but no one pays any attention to us. When she swallows it, she sits still. Very slowly, she opens her eyes again. That was literally the best thing I've ever eaten. You've said that like 20 times so far. I mean it this time. That was illegally good. What does that even mean? Now that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, come on. There's got to be some sort of meaning to something, even if it doesn't make any sense. It makes double sense. Well, all right. We laugh. Gramps always used to say that the best place to get a steak was at buffets like this. Not because they're always better, but because you can just go up and get slice after slice. Although, he's the only person I've met who could eat more than one. Marina chuckles with me, but it's nervous sounding. I used to tease him for it. No one should be able to eat that much meat. He would always complain about him being too done. He kicked his own steaks to be kind of medium rare. Closer to rare. Gross. Don't tell me you eat yours well done. Um... Uh-oh. Marina, 
I don't know if we can still be together. She looks pained. I'm just kidding, you know. Yeah, I know. But it doesn't sound like it. I shut up. That's probably not a good idea to talk about Gramps too much either. Our plates are almost, or mostly empty, and I look back at the serving area dubiously. Round two? She thinks about it, then shakes her head. I think I'd explode if I ate much more. Yeah, same. There's a soft flutter against my cheek as Marina leans over and kisses it. Thank you for bringing me. Y yeah, no problem. I intently examine the hard plastic bench I'm sitting on. Two long passes by before I talk again. So are you ready to go? Oh, sure. I can tell how on edge she is again. Good going, Amber. Nice. I launch to my feet. Just leave the dishes on the table. Someone will come by and clean them up. I have no idea if that's true. I start to leave, expecting Marina to follow me. Amber! But I turn around. She's still in the process of getting up. Wait for me! First she has to brush her face with her napkin, and then she drains the glass of orange juice she was drinking. Then she scoots out of the booth and hurries toward me. Are you alright? Yeah, sorry. Just felt kind of nauseous for a second. Probably ate too much. Oh! I doubt she's buying it. From the corner of my eye, I see her reach toward my hand. Then she seems to think better of it and lets hers fall back to her side. I grab it myself as I lead the way out of the casino. Why do they gotta be so weird about it, man? Come on. All right, that's where we're gonna end this one. We are pretty much out of time, so we'll see the rest of their Las Vegas adventures in the next episode. So, thank you for watching. If you all enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, all that fancy jazz, and I'll see you all in the next one. Take it easy.